Welcome everyone. Welcome to your new Thermidor kitchen. Today we're going to ignite your culinary ambition. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cooking on our 36 inch Thermidor Freedom Induction. We'll be cooking some balsamic reduction and we're also gonna be cooking some blinis. So before I start talking about induction, why I love it so much, specifically this one, uh, and questions that people might have about induction cooking, we're gonna start reducing our balsamic vinegar. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we wanna make sure that it cools off uh, before we start plating our blinis. If it's too hot, it's gonna welt all your herbs. So to do that, we're gonna start off with some rosato balsamic. This uh, balsamic is made out of rosé wine, so it's a little bit lighter. Uh, it's tangy, but not too tangy, and it's lighter in color. So presentation-wise, it's beautiful. I am going to add a, about a teaspoon of sugar to three and a half ounces of balsamic. And that teaspoon of sugar is not going to make it too sweet. It's gonna balance and neutralize that tanginess uh, that the balsamic has. So you can serve this on savory applications or sweet applications as well. Now, if you want something very savory, then add a little bit of salt, maybe some shallots and garlic and some herbs in there, reduce it, and you can serve that on steak, chicken, fish, salads, uh, etc. So let's start it on, uh, let's start on our balsamic reduction. We're gonna start off on our power boost function. And our power boost function is one of my favorite functions that we have here. And the reason is, once I start this on power boost, this is going to boil my liquid. Uh, this amount is gonna take about a minute and a half or so, or a minute. It's going to increase your power level on this element by 50%, which means if you have something like uh, stock or a vegetable stock, chicken stock, it's, if you have something like a gallon of liquid, it's going to boil in about three minutes or so. It's very fast, it's very responsive. So I want you to look at this liquid right now. It's actually starting to boil. So that is our power move. I also want to talk about our function where this is going to transfer my pot without changing uh, my cook mode. So it's our transfer function that we have here. I can move this pot over, up, or down, and that's going to follow my mode, my function, and my pot. I can also move this pot of liquid to this side, and that will also transfer my function, my mode, and my heat. Now, it does pop up a little uh, two pots here, so I click on those two pots, and it automatically goes back to power boost. Now what I want you to do is I want you to use our my zone function. And my zone is very effective. It's another one of my favorite modes on here because it allows me to change my heat level of my uh, product or my liquid without having to touch my screen. So actually let's start on that mode. Let's hit that to my zone. I'm gonna change this, click on that. And now I start off on level nine. And from here I can move it up without having to touch my screen and I can go from level nine, seven, five, three, and one. Why this is effective, if your hands are dirty, you don't have to dirty your uh, display. You can move it by moving your pot here, moving it up to five without moving my heat here. This is very effective when reducing sauces, wine sauces or cream sauces. And once you're done reducing that, we're gonna uh, hold it on one back here. So we're gonna boil it for about, let's boil it for two minutes, two and a half minutes. Then we're gonna go ahead and simmer it for two minutes on five, and we'll hold it uh, till we have it ready to go. Now, this 36 inch Freedom Induction has the largest functional working surface in the market. Uh, I can put about six pots or pans here easily, and it's very, very workable. So now that we have reduced our balsamic, we're gonna add a teaspoon of sugar in there. It's hot enough that it's gonna dissolve the sugar. Now. Your balsamic can be over-reduced. You can over-reduce your balsamic very easily. And what happens when you over-reduce balsamic, it turns into a viscosity, uh, a tar-like viscosity. It's really thick. So when you put it in the refrigerator, it's so thick that when you try to pour it, it's, it's, it's unpourable. So 
what you need to do is grab yourself a plate, leave it in the refrigerator before you start reducing your balsamic, and then pull it out when you think your balsamic has reduced. If you follow this recipe the way we're doing it, uh, you're not gonna have that issue. However, it's best to grab that plate while it's cold. You're gonna drop some balsamic reduction on that platter, and it should kinda drizzle down like a sauce. If you grab that balsamic and drop it on your platter, and it solidifies it to a dot, you've gone too far with the reduction process. So at this point, just add a little more liquid balsamic vinegar or water to your balsamic uh, reduction. So what you wanna do now uh, to keep it from uh, cooking or reducing more, you're gonna go ahead and grab your balsamic reduction, pour it into a little container, and keep it aside. You can keep this in the refrigerator and um, you can add any type of uh, herbs at this point if you want uh, some more flavor on here as well. So, blinis, that's what we're gonna be making right now. Blinis, blini mix in the supermarket today, it's, it's very rare to find blini mix. You'll find blinis uh, already made, uh, refrigerated. However, if you wanna make your own blini mix, it's very easy. We're gonna teach you how to use your pancake batter or pancake mix that you have in your pantry to make blinis. The difference between blinis and pancakes is that your pancakes are thicker and larger and your blinis are going to be a lot smaller and thinner. So on that subject, I don't want you to follow your pancake recipe behind that bag. Uh, what I like doing for our blinis is I like you going with a ratio of one to one. That's my ratio. I do a one to one ratio, which is one part water and one part mix. So I have half a cup of Blue, uh, of uh, pancake mix here, half a cup of water. And now just to keep it from sticking, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of butter right in here. And I'm all about building flavors and creating new flavor profiles. So if you want a little more flavor from your pancake batter or your pancake mix or your blini mix, what I recommend doing is putting a, a plastic cover on this and letting it sit out at room temperature for about three hours and then put it in, in the refrigerator for 24 hours. What this is going to do, it's going to go through a fermentation process that actually is a lot easier to break down uh, digestible in your system. So not only is it better for you, it's really tasty that way. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into a squirt bottle. If you have a squirt bottle, it's fine. If not, you can go ahead and uh, use a tablespoon and uh, that's gonna be how you're gonna pour it onto your pan uh, with the tablespoon. It's about a tablespoon per blini. So let's go ahead and grab our blini mix here. I have some melted butter. Uh, you don't have to use butter if you don't want to. You can always use any type of oil that you have in your uh, home. We're gonna set our teppanyaki pan uh, on teppanyaki pro mode. This teppanyaki pan is an accessory on thermador.com, which you can purchase. And it's very well made, it's heavy duty, and you can use it using our teppanyaki function. It's our teppanyaki pro function. So what that is, it allows me to have my heat on the bottom or the top portion half on and half off. Why that's important, if I'm doing something like sauteed vegetables and maybe a piece of fish, I can saute my vegetables, keep them warm. The residual heat of my pan is gonna to continue to keep that warm and cook my fish on the bottom portion, and pull it all together nice and hot and plate it on the right hand side of my induction surface. So we're gonna go ahead and work on these blinis. I have this on level seven. We're gonna brush this with a little bit of butter. And we're gonna drop about a tablespoon per blini on here. And we're gonna let these cook for about a minute per side. Now, when it comes to our induction uh, cooktops here, I, I really love them because it keeps my kitchen pretty cool. Um, I'm not sweating over uh, my, my, uh, my cooktop here. And that's very important when you're cooking a lot of sauces or doing a full meal with uh, three parts uh, to the meal. Uh, it also is going to uh, be very easy to maneuver, uh, say your uh, utensils or if you wanna put a recipe on here. I can kind of extend this section while it's cool uh, to be a work surface or workspace in a sense. I could put a cutting board on this side, cook my steaks on the left, and then slice them on the right, or put my menu here as well. 
and I don't have to worry about uh, catching flames or melting this at all. So at this point, it's been about a minute. We're gonna go ahead and flip our blinis over. And I want you to notice the browning that we have, the light brown that we have here, is pretty even all the way through. So with induction cooking, I don't have to worry about any hot spots or cold spots. It's pretty even all the way through. And that to me is very effective when cooking just about anything, uh, which is great. So we're gonna leave these for another minute. After about a minute, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep them up here uh, to, to stay nice and warm, right? Let's grab our blinis, put them up here. And another thing that I love about this cooktop, it does have a panel lock. And that panel lock allows me to lock my panel so if my uh, boy's walking around the kitchen, I don't have him uh, coming over and changing any of my uh, features or options that I've have set or preset at that time. Now we have our blinis cooked. We have our balsamic reduction reduced. And this is a time for you to shine. This is a time for you to think like a chef. I want you to channel that inner chef of you and be creative with what you have with what you have in your kitchen right now in your refrigeration system. So if you have apples, or if you have maybe some um, dulce de leche, or maybe some peanut butter, you can work with that too, which is great. And even a, if you want to go do a taco bar, that's another great option that you can do, or any type of uh, a bar. You can set this on the table, all your blinis, and everybody can do their own toppings. Or you can start off your uh, Thanksgiving dinner or your holiday dinner with a blini that's actually pressed on the table as a bite or a, an amouche bouche, which is really delicious. So let's dress these blinis. What we want to start off first with is a simplistic basic blini. And what we're going to do is use some whole grain mustard. And I am using whole grain mustard because it has a little more kick. Uh, I like some kick. It's more like a horseradish kick where you're going to feel it on your nasal cavity. We're going to go ahead and add some salmon, uh, smoked salmon. And this is gonna add another layer of flavor. Again, you're, we're building flavors here. We're uh, building different flavor profiles here, and that's great. We got some spice, we have some smokiness, some saltiness. Drop that right on there. All right. And now, we reduce that balsamic, and it's nice and cool. So add that right on top. Just a little bit goes a long way. So you have sweet, tart, smoky, salty, and spice, which is really awesome, right? And we can top that with uh, some chives. Or if you have any uh, microgreens in your kitchen, in your uh, refrigerator, or any parsley, you can chop some parsley and do that too. So next, I would like to go with our, um, my favorite uh, breakfast item, and that's going to be lox and bagels. We're gonna do a lox blini in a sense, and we'll start off with a little bit of creme, creme fraiche. Just a touch. So you have that layer of creaminess. Then we want to add some brininess to it, okay? So we're going to add a few pieces of capers. Nice and salty, briny. Now we can add a few pieces of smoked salmon. Put that right on there, okay? And I have shallots, and I love using shallots for this uh, application because they're smaller than red onion. I mean, I know that red onion's really good with lox and bagels, but uh, shallots are a little bit more fine-tuned and uh, refined for this dish here. And then, at this point, I can add some tomatoes. Uh, well, you can add regular raw tomatoes, but Mike just did us a favor, and he pulled out these beautiful tomatoes out of our brand new Masterpiece oven. And these tomatoes are very special, uh, and, and, and <laughs> they take some time. They take time to cook. These have been on bake mode in our new Masterpiece oven at 150 degrees for eight hours. I tossed them lightly in a little bit of olive oil and a touch of salt. So it, when you bite into it, it's, it's a burst of happiness. It, it pops in your mouth. There's this, uh, it's like having a tomato sauce encased by a tomato skin. It's incredible, it's delicious, 
And for aesthetics, it looks beautiful. So we're gonna add one of these on here. And then we have some dill that we can apply to the top of this one. Oh, that's pretty. That dill on there. And next up, we're gonna make a classic Pliny, and, and this one's going to have caviar. So I have two forms of uh, caviar here. I have regular caviar, and I have balsamic pearls. Uh, you can get these pearl-shaped caviar form uh, of balsamic. You can ha uh, get them in pomegranate form as well too, uh, and olive oil, I believe. Uh, but for this one, we're gonna start off with a little bit of creme fraiche. I have some finely chopped hard boiled egg. And now we're gonna add a little bit of caviar on top. And once you finish plating here for presentation, you can always clean up your plate. And now we can add some chives right on top. I'm gonna actually wipe this platter down just a tad bit here presentation purposes. And it's okay if it falls on your induction cooktop. I'm purpose purposely doing that, just because it's easy to clean on here when you're ready to clean this up, right? Okay. So next up, we're gonna do a version there that is dairy-free. I know that uh, some folks out there want dairy-free options, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a touch of mustard. We're going to add some smoked salmon, all right. And I can actually use our balsamic pearls here. And presentation-wise, this is gorgeous. So pretty. They shine, they're bright. And you have some balsamic vinegar on there as well. And we can add a few pieces of uh, shallots on there too. Why not, right? And now we're gonna top that off with some dill. Just a small leaf of dill there. And your next option. Again, remember we were talking about that balsamic. You can use it for savory or sweet options. I'm actually gonna drop that balsamic on our, uh, on our fruit or dessert option. And what we're gonna do is use some raspberries. And this one you can add cream if you want. I'm gonna keep it uh, dairy free. I also have some blackberries, but I want you to look at these blackberries here. And I like slicing my blackberries in half. And the reason I do that is it really gives a really nice presentation. Uh, and I'll do this for uh, yogurt parfaits or even garnishes. It shows a heart of your blackberry. Then we're gonna have our balsamic. A touch of balsamic on there. If you have mint at this point, you can add mint, or if you have something like uh, edible flowers that you can get at the market, you can actually use those too. And these give a really nice presentation, and it also gives it a floral flavor. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your blinis. It's been a pleasure cooking on our flagship Freedom Induction Cooktop. And now I want you to take these and cook these at home and make them your own. Thank you very much.